بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ويحته الله فلا مذل له ويذل فلا حاجل له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله أما بعد فإن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الخدى خدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن الشر الأمور محتسات محتساتها وكل محتسة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار Today we're looking at chapter 33 in Kitab al-Tawheed and this chapter is concerning a tawakkul and the chapter begins uh, the Shaykh Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah he begins uh, the chapter with the saying Bab qawli Allah ta'ala وعلى الله فتوكلوا إن كنتم مؤمنين. and then the Sheikh goes on to bring other verses, um, but the translation of the chapter heading is chapter concerning the saying of Allah the Most High. وعلى الله فتوكلوا إن كنتم مؤمنين. place your trust, your reliance upon Allah. If indeed you are believers, or upon Allah place your trust, if indeed you are believers. So the Shaykh, Shaykh Salih al Fawzan, he comments upon this, uh, the opening of the chapter and this verse, and so he says, A tawakkul is a tafweed, a tawakkul which you translate as reliance, is explained by the word a tafweed, which means to relegate or submit an affair to someone else, to, 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 to relegate uh, an affair to someone else. So a, a tawakkul ala Allah means to leave the affairs, to relegate the affairs, to submit them all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this itself is from the greatest of the types of worship. Why is this chapter relevant to the book of Tawheed? This is because when tawakkul upon Allah is indeed worship, as we will see, uh, as is clear from these verses that are within this chapter, then since tawakkul is ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's obligatory to make it sincerely and purely for Him and to not rely upon things besides Him. Because worship is the right of Allah, and so when it is turned away and given to, uh, when worship is directed to other than Him, then it becomes shirk. So tawakkal upon other than Allah is shirk as will be explained in uh, later in this chapter insha'Allah. So this book then, this uh, blessed book which the Shaykh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab which he authored in order to explain tawheed, and in order to explain shirk, then tawakkal uh, upon Allah it is tawheed. To make tawakkal upon Allah it is tawheed. And to, tawak- to make tawakkal upon other than him is shirk. And that's why the inclusion of this chapter within this book dealing with this topic is appropriate for uh, is, is appropriate and suitable for this book. So then the Sheikh says that Sheikh al Islam said Babu Qawlillahi chapter concerning the saying of Allah. And what he means by this is meaning chapter concerning the tafsir of this verse or of these verses which are included in this chapter. Because in this chapter uh, uh, the, you know, he explains the explanation of these noble verses that he will quote in order to highlight the fact that tawakkul is worship and is only to be directed only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, so Allah says then, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Upon Allah place your trust if indeed you are believers. These verse, this verse is from Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah. And it's concerning the story of Musa alayhi salam. Uh, concerning the, the, the people of Musa, when, uh, when Musa said to them, Ya qawmi dhulu al-arda, ya qawmi dhulu al-arda al-muqaddasa. O people, enter into the blessed land. Enter into the blessed land. And he means here the land of Palestine, the land of Palestine in order that they may purify it from the idol worshippers because in that time that land was inhabited or was, control, was in the control of the idol worshippers and so Musa alayhi salam he was commanded 
with performing uh, jihad in order to spread tawheed and in order to wage war against shirk and disbelief in Allah and to purify the, these various places which were blessed places from the, you know, from the grip of the idol worshippers. So this, uh, and this itself is from the objectives of jihad in the path of Allah. So then the verse continues uh, in this passage concerning Musa, Ya Qawmid Khulul Ard al Muqaddasata Lati Katab Allahu Lakum. O people, enter into this blessed land which Allah has written for you or prescribed upon you. Uh, and this is because the Shaykh explains that Allah had written, Allah has prescribed that these mosques and these various places, these you know blessed places, are for the believers from the creation, from amongst Bani Israel and other than them, meaning it is for them to inhabit and to be in control of. As Allah says, Katab Allahu Lakum. Allah has legislated that the control and the ownership and the guardianship over you know, these mosques and these places are for the believers. Just like Allah has mentioned in another verse, وَلَكَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ في الزبور من بعد الذكر أن الأرض يرثها عباد يصالحون. That we have indeed written in the Zabur uh, from before the, before the remembrance that the earth will be inherited by my righteous servants. So having this ownership or guardianship control over the mosques, especially the blessed mosques, uh, which are which are the Masjidul Haram. In Mecca and the Masjid al Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Medina, and Al Masjid al Aqsa, in Jerusalem. And likewise, all of the other masajid, then they are to be under the control of the believers. It's not permissible that the kuffar and the mushrikeen from amongst the idol worshippers and the grave worshippers, that they have uh, authority over the mosques of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا كَانَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ أَنْ يَعْمُرُوا مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ شَاهِدِينَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ بِالْكُفْرِ أُولَٰئِكَ حَبِتَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ وَفِي النَّارِ هُمْ خَالِدُونَ إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُوا مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ It is not for the mushrikeen, mushrikun, not for the pagans, that they uh, frequent the mosques of Allah, witnessing against themselves with disbelief. They are the ones whose actions will be vain, nullified, and in the, in the hellfire shall they remain. Indeed, only those frequent the mosques of Allah, those who believe in Allah and the last day. And um, the Shaykh says that this, this verse has already preceded in the chapter which is before this chapter, referring to uh, the previous chapter. So the Shaykh says, continues, and then he says, concerning the Masjid al-Haram specifically, وَهُمْ يَسُدُّونَ عَنِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَمَا كَانُوا أَوْلِيَاءَهُ إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءُهُ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقُونَ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ That they prevent, you know, they, they prevent from the Masjid al-Haram, meaning they, withhold, they prevent the people from it. And they were not, the, it, you know, they were not its guardians or maintainers. Indeed, its guardians and maintainers are only those who are the muttaqun, those who fear Allah. Yet most of them do not know. So from these verses it's established that the mosques of Allah and specifically the three mosques in Mecca, Medina and Jerusalem that the, it's obligatory that the control and the ownership is for the Muslimin. And it's not that they, it shouldn't be the case that the Mushrikeen have any authority over them and so therefore it's obligatory upon the Muslimin that they strive all, up until they uh, purify these mosques and remove these mosques from the hands of the Mushrikeen. So coming back to Musa, Musa alayhi salam, he was commanded uh, to, to do this, so to, he was commanded to come out with the Bani Israel, to bring them out, and you know, intending to uh, purify Baytul Maqdis, the, you know, the, 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 the house, the, the mosque at Jerusalem. And however, Bani Israel were a cowardly people. They were a cowardly people, as Allah says, uh, about them, that when Musa السلام, said this to them, they said, قَالُوا يَا مُوسَىٰ إِنَّ فِيهَا قَوْمًا جَبَّارِينَ وَإِنَّا لَنَدْخُلَهَا حَتَّى يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا that, Oh Musa, indeed, in that, in, 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 in that place are, are, are a tyrannical 
haughty people, you know, um, meaning strong, uh, powerful people. And indeed, we shall not enter it up until they leave it. So concerning this, it used to be said that there used to be a tribe amongst these people called, uh, they, were, they were called Al-Amaliq, and they, they were known to be very strong in their, you know, very strong in their body, very, you know, very powerful, very strong. And when Bani Israel said this, uh, this really on, on Bani Israel's behalf was, you know, like an extreme end of humiliation and like a mockery of them uh, because the non the, you know, the, these people wouldn't, wouldn't um, leave except un unless it was by jihad and unless it was by, you know, uh, seeking uh, the face of Allah and seeking martyrdom in, 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 in the face of Allah, meaning on behalf of Bani Israel. So Bani Israel, this is, this is how they responded. They responded that we're not going to go there up until they themselves leave. And this represented the cowardliness uh, on, their, on their behalf. So then the verse continues, and there were two men amongst them. So Allah says, Qala Rajulani, there were two men, meaning from Bani Israel, and there were two men from the people of strong opinion and uh, strong, resolute iman, uh, faith. So Qala Rajulani, min al yakhafuna an'am Allahu alihima. The two men said from amongst those who feared, meaning those who feared Allah, had the fear of Allah, أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلِيهِمَا and to, on whom Allah, upon whom Allah had blessed and favoured meaning that Allah had favoured them and blessed them with Iman and you know a, a strong, correct, truthful intent the, so they said meaning that you should become strong and resolute and then proceed towards them up until they, they see that you have some sort of strength and when they see that you have got some sort of strength because you are proceeding against them and, walk and, and approaching them in a resolute and a firm way then they themselves will leave of their own accord so, so the verse continues continues so then when you enter them, enter upon them then you know they you will become victorious so um, the Sheikh says that there's no doubt that if any uh, battle or, or attack took place, like if a correct attack took place, and then the Mujahideen, um, you know, they entered upon those people, they entered, you know, the, uh, into that town or that, or that place, that fear would have entered into the hearts of those people, and they themselves would have left of their own accord. But to embark upon the likes of this affair can only occur from the people of Iman, the people of true Iman, meaning those who would be, have the faith to embark upon such a bold and audacious thing that they, you know, even though the, the enemy might be strong, that they will move ahead, firm, resolute, with firm belief, and to give them, you know, to, 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 to feel and, and believe that they are strong, so that their enemies become, become scared. That this is only from, this occurs from the people of Iman, the people of truthfulness, the people of a true intent and you know the people of strength as occurred such as for example the people of Muhammad the companions of Muhammad والسلام, those who used to strive and used to attack against you know the, the, the kuffar and they would um, open up you know attack from different angles from different doors from different entrances and they would you know put themselves in in danger the likes of these people you know th this is what's required so then he said on top of this just entering upon them, you know, I mean, attacking and entering upon them, and entering through their, you know, the gates, that in itself isn't isn't sufficient. Rather, there must be something else. And this is explained at the end of this verse, at the end of this passage. And this is where Allah, this is where um, uh, it is said, Wa Allahi fatawakkalu in kuntum mu'minin. Right. So upon Allah, place your trust if indeed you are believers. So meaning that just having a strong, resolute intent and advancing to forward in the path of Allah and putting oneself forward, you know, putting one's soul forward in the path of Allah, that in, its, that in itself isn't sufficient. It must also be accompanied with tawakkul, having tawakkul 
upon Allah and you know, not relying just upon one's own strength, thinking that because we have strength, we have numbers, we have this, that and the other, you know, just depending upon that alone. Rather, a person must depend upon Allah, rely upon Allah, alongside taking all of the various ways and means of strength, you know, taking the various ways and means of acquiring you know, proper, proper strength. So, the, the point being from this verse, or the proof in this verse, if we look at this verse, or this particular passage, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُ مُؤْمِنِينَ We find that Allah, in this verse, He preceded the, um, the one upon whom reliance is to be placed, which in this case is Allah, that He preceded it before the action or the, or the mentioning of the people who perform the action. So, for example, Allah in this verse, Allah says, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ Right, so he mentioned that first, and then he delayed the action, or he delayed the doer of the action. So afterwards he said, تَوَكَّلُوا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا And whenever we see this occurring in the Arabic language, then this means, as, as the Shaykh Sheikh says, مِمَّا يُفِيدُ الْحَسَرِ Meaning that it implies a limitation, meaning only place your trust and reliance upon Allah. So for example, Allah didn't say, Tawakkalu uh, ala Allah. He didn't say in the verse, Fatawakkalu ala Allah. He said, Wa ala Allahi fatawakkalu. Right, so he mentioned himself first, and then he delayed the action, the doer of the action, which is Tawakkalu. And whenever this occurs in the Arabic language, then this implies either like comprehensiveness, and limitation, meaning that only place your trust and your reliance upon Allah and no one else. And this itself, the fact that the wording occurs in this manner, is a proof. This itself is a proof to show that tawakkul is to be uh, is to be directed only to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, purely and sincerely to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that it is one of the ways and the means of Allah aiding Allah aiding them against their opponents. And this verse. Or the, or the saying in this verse is very similar to the saying of Allah uh, in Surah Al-Fatiha إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ That you alone do we worship and you alone, from you alone do we seek aid. Again we find Allah in this verse, He has delayed the doer of the action and brought the object of the action forward. Right? So we say, you alone do we worship. So we've brought Allah, Allah, Allah forward, you alone, meaning addressing Allah, do we worship? And the action has been delayed. So you alone do we worship, and you alone do we, um, um, you know, do, do we seek aid? So but really, if we were to say it the proper way around, it would really be na'buduka wa nasta'inu bika. Na'buduka, so we mentioned the action first, and the object of the action afterwards. So, na'budu, we worship, ka, you, we worship you. Wanasta'inu bika, we seek aid from you. However, it's been reversed the other way around. So, the ma'mul, meaning here in this case, Allah, reference to Allah, and <coughs> uh, meaning the, 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 the uh, you know, a detached pronoun in this case, which is iyaka, and the action, actions have been moved forward. So, uh, sorry, have been moved, uh, have been delayed, and have been put, put, put ahead. So, na'budu occurs after iyaka, and nasta'inu occurs after iyaka. And again, the same thing, whenever this occurs, this implies <coughs> like comprehensiveness, in the sense that this action is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and for nobody else, meaning that we only worship you alone, and that we only seek aid from you and from nobody else. And this, in, this is indeed is ikhlas, the sincerity, and it is uh, Tawheed. So, this verse clearly establishes then that Tawakkul is an act of worship, and it is purely and sincerely only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for no one else. And likewise, this story uh, of Musa alayhi salam and the people of Bani Israel and the two men who made that suggestion of how they should proceed, you know, being bold and, get, and, and you know, without flinching so that the enemy would get scared, and then, that in, in addition to this, that they should make their reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, uh, the next verse, 
that Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab brings in uh, his chapter heading is the saying of Allah in Surah 